Well, good try, Henry, but you may be surprised to learn that the facts of life are even stranger than your fiction. In fact, it's the male seahorse who gives birth to the babies. Huh? After an amazing courtship dance, the female seahorse puts up to 200 fertilized eggs into a special pouch on the front of the male. See how big he's grown? Excuse me, that's amazing and exhausting. The male seahorse hangs around on clumps of weed, getting fatter and fatter as the babies grow inside the pouch until one day he's ready to pop. And be a pop. When the babies are born, they just float off and start a life of their own. The baby seahorse is very independent. Most animal parents need to protect their babies a lot longer. Hey! Careful, Henry. Mother ducks are really protective. Whoa, maybe I'm not doing such a great job of looking after the kid. I better make it up to him. Come on, squirt! I think he's forgiven you, Henry. Hop on! Good idea. After all, he's only a little guy. We're off. What a great idea. But nobody ever thought of this before. Actually, Henry, you're not the first one. Scorpions not only carry babies on their back, they have a deadly sting for extra protection. I gotta work on that. Parents can look after babies in lots of other ways, though, not just with deadly weapons. This male Australian jacana bird keeps a very close eye on his chicks as they play on the water lilies. They're sweet. They're all little and fluffy and cute. But they're also in deadly danger. From what? From that, a hungry python. Yikes! Snakes alive! Why can't that pesky python pick on someone its own size? Don't worry. Dad has seen the danger and signals to his chicks. Hurry up! Wait a minute. This is no time for disco dancing. He's not doing the hustle. He's distracted the snake long enough to make a dash for the babies. Wow! That's what I call staying alive! Hey! Now that's one mean-looking sardine! It's not a sardine. It's an Amazonian arowana fish. I don't arowana meet it, thanks. He looks hungry. Baby fish, look out! There's an arowana about! Not quite right, Henry. This is the predator fish, not the arowana. But look, it's eating the babies. See, he's got a mouthful. He's got a mouthful, all right, but not to eat. They're his babies, and they're just hiding from predators in the safety of Dad's mouth. A fish in the mouth is worth two in the bush, or something. Award for the all-time best amazing animal baby. Third place bronze medal goes to the baby giraffe, who has to survive a drop to the ground of six feet when it's born. Ouch! Second place silver goes to the baby right whale. Whales have the biggest babies in the whole wide world. In fact, their babies are the biggest the world has ever.
ever seen. But my Golden Gecko Award for the all-time best amazing animal baby goes to the African hunting dog. Why choose that, Henry? I decided to pay tribute to a fellow amazing babysitter. The African hunting dog really looks after its pups. I wouldn't like to try to cope with all these greedy guys. And they're not even all her own kids. They're not? No. While the rest of the pack is out hunting, one female is picked to suckle and look after all the other dogs' babies so the other adults can go off to find food. Doggy daycare! Once you hear, the babysitter is really relieved when the real mom comes home. She brings back a scrumptious snack of pre-digested meat for the little ones. Hey guys, chow time! Come and get it! When the babysitter shift is over, she'll race off to try to find somewhere quiet for a while. I can relate. Looks like you've got things under control here, Henry. Mm, this babysitting thing's a breeze. I got it down to a science. Uh, Henry. <laughs> See? I'm a natural when it comes to this baby business. But, uh... Oh, no! Ah! I'm just that good. Yeah, right. Babies do need to play sometime, though, Henry. That's how animals learn, through play, like these black bears. This is just a game, but it teaches them skills they'll need as adults. Bear babies stay with their mother until they're two years old. Then they have to stand on their own bare feet. They should try sandals. <laughs> or running shoes. They'll need to run and fight to survive when they grow up. Practicing attack and defense through play fighting will give them the skills and strength they need. Somebody's been drinking my water. I'm not sure I can bear this. Somebody's been eating my food, and they're still there. And they'll be there for two years until they're big enough to look after themselves. And find their own bear necessities. Playing is fun, but it also helps other kinds of baby animals to find their place in animal society. For young baboons, spending time together helps them learn which playmates are friendly and which aren't. These two seem to be getting along just fine. But what about those guys up there? Playing like this helps the baby baboons learn the value of friendship and alliances. And if things go wrong, you can always run back to a grown-up and jump on board. Guess that's what they call having a monkey on your back. Playing and learning Grooming and making friends through day-to-day -day contact all help a young baboon to know his or her place in the troop right from the very start. So everything starts from when we're very little. Sure. Babies are the beginning. Get that part right and it makes all the rest of life a whole lot easier.
Henry, what's all this? Well, since I now know everything there is to know about babies, I've started my own daycare center. I have a knack of keeping kids in line. That's some knack you've got there, Henry. Can you say ow? Ow. Now that's what I call some amazing animal babies. Bye, Henry. <laughs> <laughs>